Good evening and welcome to the penultimate day of the World Amateur Boxing Championships. We've had six days of fierce competition here in Belfast and after 310 bouts, we're down to the 12 finals. For British boxing fans though, one of them stood out more than the rest. The question was, could David Hay become our first boxer to win gold in the history of these games? In his way stood Odlania Solis, the Cuban heavyweight who assumed the mantle of the legendary Felix Sabon. Tonight we'll also bring you the best of the Cuban stars in action in the other finals. Joining Wayne and me in the studio tonight is a man who won England's first World Championship medal this week, Carl Froch. Good evening. Good evening. How did it feel? It felt really good to um, make it through. There you are on the rostrum there. It was, um, it was an historic day, really. First medal we've won. Yeah, most definitely. Everybody was um, saying it's a big thing to ask, go out and make, um, make a statement by winning a medal. And obviously to go out and do that. Really, really big achievement. It feels good to do. Do you have family and friends over here to, to share the moment? Yeah, I had my um, mother and stepdad and my um, older brother, but everybody else would have been watching at home. Did, did you believe you could get a medal when you when you when you came here? Um, yeah, I really did. Really did believe I could get a medal. You have to um, you have to believe you can get a medal um, coming out here. You have to be confident, or um, you don't get anywhere. Show some confidence anyway. Yeah, definitely. Well, after Audley Harrison's Olympic gold in Sydney, hopes were high that England could build on that success this week. The man who was closest to matching Audley's gold is David Hay. This will be your fourth contest in five days. Take us through what's happened so far. Um, my first fight uh, was against um, a guy from Netherlands, Holland. Um, tough southpaw, um, very tricky, very strong, a lot bigger than me. He was about 10 pounds heavier than me. Um, but I outclassed him, got 15 points up on him, so they automatically stopped the fight. My second fight was against the German, um, big massive guy, <laughs> once again, an Olympic bronze medalist, um, great pedigree, they really wanted him to win. I really had to go with hell for leather in the last round to get, to bring the fight back to my, my side because the judges didn't want me to get the decision, so I had to really give it to them, and that's what I did. My last fight was against Ukraine, another tough guy, good head work, good head movement, tricky guy, so I had to put on a bit of a boxing show and cut him down, but tonight I got um, I've got the Cuban, he's the best guy out there, so I don't feel I've got anything to lose. I've come out here, I've made history, um, silver medal, I feel like I've won it already, but I'm going to go out there and just enjoy myself and fingers crossed get the gold. Is there a danger that you'll coast, that you're the first Englishman ever to win a silver medal, yeah. you've made history, and that you just coast through the final and say, well, the silver's good enough? Um, no, I'm not going out there for that, I'm going out there for the gold, definitely. The guy I'm fighting, I'm not, I ain't got no illusions, I know the guy is brilliant, um, but the better, it seems like the better guy I fight, the better I'll raise my level to. So hopefully I can go up there with him and just outwork him. After all those contests that you've been talking about, how are you feeling now, mentally and physically? Mentally, I feel very strong, very um, together. I know exactly what I want to do tactically. Um, physically, it's a different, different story together. I'm really knackered. I had three, day, three fights on the spin, three hard fights on the spin. Um, body's aching, but that's all part of it. If you want to become the best in the world, You've got to put your body through it. It's sacrifice. You've seen what's happened to Audley. That could mm. be happening to you. You're in the glamour division, the heavyweight division. Yeah. You could soon be a big hero. Are you ready for all that? Yeah, of course. Um, that's all part of boxing. Um, the better you are, the more publicity you get. The you become. I ain't got no problems with being famous. <laughs> well, the 20-year-old Londoner had a massive challenge on his hands this afternoon against the Cuban, Odlaniat Solis. We join us at the start. Wayne and Jim Neely were watching. We thought that an English boxer reaching these finals here in Belfast might be stretching expectations just that little bit. But David Hay has exceeded everybody's expectations and he's boxed quite splendidly. The second English boxer contest to get to the semi-finals. The first English the boxer to get to the, the finals of the World Championships. And can in he the go the whole corner, way as Audley Harrison did in Sydney, kilos. Australia? last September David in the Olympic Hay, Games. England. And in the blue corner, Odlanier Solis, Cuba. Well, who would have thought we would have Cuba against England for gold and silver in a world championship? But that is the case here in this heavyweight division. This is the 21-year-old. And this is just a 20-year-old box a couple of years ago as a light heavyweight in Houston went out in the first, or I should say, second series to the eventual gold medalist. 
But David Hay has really performed quite splendidly. So David Hay guaranteed silver and eight minutes away from gold. And what way McCulloch will his tactics be? You know, David Hay's been fighting well the whole way through this competition. He's got natural punch and power. And yesterday he proved that he can box as well, like he's doing right now, on the jab and move. Good solid right hand from Hay, and he's taken the lead against the Cuban, who attempts to slap with the open part of the glove. And what Hay does, oh, he's got him with the right hand! What a cracker from Hay in the opening 20 seconds. And the Cuban rocked back in his feet. And I haven't seen a Cuban hit like that in living memory. What an absolute corking shot from the Englishman. And the Cuban champion, Rock and Hay, has nailed him. Unbelievable shot. He's got the Cuban. He's, he's got him badly hurt here. He can finish this fight if he steps it up. I've never seen anybody being hurt that bad in the whole competition. That was par of itself. Beautiful shot. Well, what sort of a chin does this fella Solis have? Because that was a shot that would have knocked over a JCB. 8-2 to David Hay. Who would have believed that? He beat the Olympic bronze medalist in the quarterfinal. He came through against the hard Ukrainian Uzelkov, and he's caught the gold medal favorite flush on the chin, and David Hay is 9-2 up after just a minute of this final, and it was nearly, nearly over. This Cuban has not been the same since he got hit. David Hay's fighting a smart fight, sticking behind the jab and waiting for the right hand over the top. That's a punch that'll do danger. He just needs to take his time, and s just try to set the punches in and make them count. Well, Solis was so impressive in the semi-final against uh, Sultan Ahmed Ibrahimov of Russia. The Olympic and European silver medalist, he settled down a little bit, but what a shock he's been given by David Hay. I tell you, that nearly was the upset of this or any other competition in recent years. Look at David, he's so relaxed in there. He got his hands down. He's enjoying this. He's having a good time in there, and, you know, he knows he's... He's he got a good lead here, and he's on his way to gold. Well, in Houston a couple of years ago, in a second contest, he lost uh, just by eight points to two to the eventual gold medalist Michael Sims of the USA, and he's got to keep up this pressure. He's allowed the Cuban to come back into it ever so slightly, but that nearly was everybody's dreams come true with one very hard right hand. Well, that was a punch and a quarter right at the start of that round, and David Hay nearly disposed of Solis of Cuba with one big punch. Solis coming forward. There was that uppercut delivered absolutely perfectly, and Wayne Rose saved the Cuban by stepping in. Here it is again. A little bit of wildness. He took his time. Wallop. Oh! Unbelievable shot. I'm surprised the Cuban didn't go right down on his back from that shot. Well, David Hay will look at this time after time after time, and if he's delivered a better shot in his entire career so far, I will be very, very surprised indeed. That nearly was a gold medal punch in the opening 20 seconds. So Hay with silver in the bag, but wants the gold. 9-4 now to the Englishman. Solis has recovered his composure and I'm quite sure he does not want to stand and trade punches with Hay, having experienced the Englishman's power. Well, Celis knows that David Hay can punch. He's got his hands up well, and he's sort of... He's not as fast as he was in the very first round, you know. He's, he's taking his time. He knows David's got that big right hand, and if he lands it clean, he'll knock the Cuban out. Well, still four points up. Solis has got very, very fast hands, maybe faster than the Englishman's, but that, the timing and the accuracy and the way that uppercut was delivered in the first round was sensational Solis coming back now he's closed the gap to three points and he's trying to crowd hate well it says a lot to this fella and it says a lot for Cuban boxing that he can regain his composure after a shot like that and he's closed the gap now to a single point and one hopes that Hayes moment hasn't gone well David needs to get on the jab here and start moving a bit you know the Cubans coming back strong David needs to throw shorter punches and move through combinations and stay out of trouble get off them ropes well for the first time Solis has gone ahead. He trailed 9-4 at the start of this round, and he's picked up eight scoring shots to only two from the English one. Hay needs to step up the work rate. A little bit of a shove there from Solis, and he has done wonderfully to recover from that. But two points now the difference, and this has been a terrific round from Solis. Hay next one back. He's got to use that right hand again. He's got him again, but it wasn't just as hard, but it's a leveling point as opposed to a contest ending point. Terrific support from Hay here in the Odyssey Arena in Belfast. Hay's fighting, you know, he's fighting a good fight here. 
both combinations. If he throws the combinations, he'll jab, jab, then the right hand will come right behind it. And that's a punch that could do the damage. This Cuban is strong. He's keep coming forward here and he's he's trying to pick David Hay out now. Well, this Cuban is a man who has uh, not just forced an eight count in David Hay, but he's a man who has beaten the great Felix Savant six times the world and three times the Olympic champion. He's only 21 years old, the reigning Cuban champion. And he's going to turn round four points up. And that was a very, very tough round for David Hay. Yeah, the Cuban turned it right around there. You know, he fought a good, good round, pulled it back. But David's still in there. He's got a good chance. Good defence by the Cuban. Very fast left hand. Blocked the Englishman's attack and came straight back at him. Good variation. The Cuban With going the down to the body. From the 75 kilo division and 91... Good shot by David Hay right through the guard of the Cuban, but didn't in that second round do it often enough. Come on, keep him up, get that jump through the gap. Come on, jump it all up. Time to go, get that chin down. Let the right hand go up through the belly as it goes, or right through that gap. Come on, suck it in. Come on, find the space for yourself. David Hay up out of his corner, Solis taking every advantage in the minute gap between rounds two and three. So the halfway point in this heavyweight final, Cuba against England. David Hay, who so very nearly won it in the opening 20 seconds under a little bit of pressure. He's uh, five points adrift now. Solis has recovered absolutely wonderfully from what nearly was a contest winning shot from the Englishman. And he's come back and he's leading David Hay now by six points. And Solis, always the favorite, in this division is now showing exactly why. Solis has definitely stepped up the pace here. You know, he's looking for the big shot over the top. David needs to keep his, his left hand just up a little bit. He doesn't want to take too many of these counts, you know. He needs to keep his hands up and just go out there and fight. Well, that's the second count against him now. It's uh, three in a round or four overall. And has Hayes' best effort well come and gone. Ten points now to Solis. Hay doesn't want to get stopped, I'm quite sure. In, the final of the world championships he gave us such a bit of excitement in that opening round he's got to hang on he's got to do a little bit more he looks very tired and Solis is threatening to stop this it looks he's really now tough. 13 points up and this may not see the end of the round what a disappointment for Hay it's all over Wayne Rose has stepped in and he stopped it and Solis caught cold in the opening 20 seconds in true championship style has come through and has won the gold medal He's outpointed and outclassed David Hay of England, who so very nearly produced a major upset. But no wonder this fellow is the successor to Felix Savon. What he may not have Savon's physical stature, but I think he's got a better range of punching. What a turnaround, you know. He was almost out on his feet in the first round. He turned it right around, but David, David's left him to be ashamed of. He's got a silver medal. He fought his heart out, almost had it won, but just it came up short. Well, too much pressure. The, uh, Australian referee Wayne Rose had a really good look and Hay under pressure right from the start of that third round indeed from the middle of the second simply couldn't sustain that sort of accurate punching Hay has got a silver medal he's very happy with that but for one thrilling magical moment it looked as if Hay was going to turn the whole thing on its head and Results win the gold in the contest. opening round the referee stopped the contest the winner a 91 kilo world champion Odlanier in the red corner, Cuba. Olanier Solis Fonte, the 21-year-old junior world champion from 1998, the Pan American champion of 99, the national champion for the past two years, has now fulfilled his destiny and has become the world champion. But David Hay is the first English boxer well, ever to win a silver medal. And this has been a wonderful performance from this fellow Solis, and we'll see a lot more of him. From England, David Hay. He boxed in Houston as an 18-year-old. He came here to Belfast as a 20-year-old. And for one bright, shining moment, it looked as if David Hay was going to get a gold Bronze medal. medalist. He's had to settle for a silver, but he's more than happy Yankov with that. Slav Uzelkov of the Ukraine. There was the moment, eh? There was the moment. Wayne said last night in here, he said he thought you had the speed and the power to beat Solis. Yeah. What was uh, your game plan going in? Going in there, I knew Carl came into the dressing room before the fight and told me that the Cubans were starting fast. 
um, all the guys who had a, picked up an early lead in the first round and tried to um, sit on it. So I thought to myself, if he's going to come out blasting away, obviously he's, he's the man really, he's beat Felix Yvonne, the legend. So that he wouldn't have no qualms about attacking me with no respect. So I thought, all right, then let it come. Um, slipped the shot, hit him with a good uppercut. Referee jumped in. I'd love to just finish him off, but you can't do it in amateur in boxing. The referee, the referee gets in. We and were all ringside, and we were I know, I was there. I, know. Yeah, I, know. I, I think we finish. can see the clip of the moment here, where we all jumped out of our seats. Just talk us through it. Yeah, there you go. The shot. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I went to finish him off there, but your referee says break, and you got to step back. Um, I'd love to just keep the pressure on him, but in amateur yeah. boxing. He's got you in the corner, really. Yeah, here, he's, got, he's he? got me here. He's thinking no respect whatsoever. Just throwing shots. No respect for my power, and he's, he respected it after that. He's out, of, <laughs> he's out of it. There he actually looks momentarily calm, doesn't he? He does. He was like, <laughs> that's the way it goes, you know. Yeah, he came back he... strong. Most people would have been knocked completely out. That's what you said. Nearly 20 people out with that same uppercut. Were you, were you surprised took... that he didn't go down? I was surprised, and I hit him, I thought, that's it, it's all over. But he just, he sort of stabbed, stabbed him back, and I thought, is he going down or what? And he didn't, he just kept on his feet and got a count, and he was back. He was still a bit gone, I tried to finish him off. As I caught him in the uppercut, I damaged um, my right bicep, which I did on the last night. Um, it it um, went again, so um, I think it hurt me as much as it hurt him because yeah. I never had the same power in the right hand after that. You said you, you felt, when you did that uppercut, you felt, you felt the pain as well yeah, as I he felt it. Felt. I did. I felt, felt my right bicep kind of rip or tear or something, um, but it was really, really badly swollen after the fight. But the better man won on the day, no excuses. Um, no. If I, if, I, if, if, if the referee wouldn't have stopped it, I'm sure my right hand would have been all right to finish him off. But as the fight went, um, his power and strength t told. And uh, me, I'm only, he was about 12 pounds heavier than me going into that fight. So did, that, did that count? Did that make a difference? Yeah, definitely. Giving away 12 pounds to anyone is a, lot of, is a, is a hell of a difference in weight. Um, Experience-wise, he's miles in front That's of me. That's so many more bats. Yeah, he's... he's did, did he hit hard, or you, you were saying... He, he didn't, to be strength. honest, he didn't hurt me at all in that fight. I've been hurt a lot more. I think we can that. see here. Yeah. I think this is the moment when, uh, when the fight was stopped, actually. You looked he, exhausted here, Dave. I wasn't exhausted. It was just, um... Like, I wasn't hurt there at all. I could have carried on. I could have carried on, but the referee saw that he was on top. And, you know, in amateur boxing, they don't like to people taking any punishment. I'd have liked to tough it out and see how they've done in the next round because he would have probably got more confident and maybe I could have hit him with another sucker punch. Mm. But it's the way it goes. I'm yeah. happy with the silver. I came out here nine months to the heavyweight division, number two in the world. What more can you ask for? That's right. How, how, much, how much experience will he have gained from this tournament? He's got one foot, the, the best guy in the world, you know what I mean? You know, this guy was, took over from Zavon. You know, he's impressed me all week. He, I told you yesterday yeah. that in the semi-finals, he, everybody thought he just had punching power. And in the semis, you proved that you can box as well. Mm. And you know, today he just caught up with a good guy. The fight, I, I thought the fight was over. We heard you. Know, you know, you heard me commentating. I thought the fight was over. You know, a great shot, but the Cuban took it well. Yeah. And he came back, but mm -hmm. you can't get better experience than that. Well, we were, just saying, before, we were just saying before, this, you said the Cuban's got a great chin. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the guy was out for like a second, and then he, on his way down, he decided to stay on his feet. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? So, you know, David. I don't know anyone else who could have took that shot, to be honest. No way. No, no way. I've knocked out big, big men. With that big eight in stone men in the gym. I'm not gonna mention no names, but I've knocked, <laughs> I've knocked out big, big top class men. And he took just that well. to prove that the Cubans are so conditioned mm. for training full time. You know, we're here, we have to work or whatever. Yeah. But it just doesn't matter how, how conditioned you are, though, when if you get caught with one of them, you, you can go, go, go down. Yeah, but your condition would help you to stay up a wee bit longer. You, know, you go back to Lennox Lewis, if he would have been conditioned, maybe to stay up or get up quicker. Yeah. You know, but what about the future? What, mm. what if? Don King walked in here with a bag full of money and said, that's yours, we turn pro. First thing I'd do, I think I'd check that it's counterfeit. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then tell him to come back in a couple of years with free bags. <laughs> really? Yeah, definitely. What about yourself, Cole? Any, any sort of ambition turning pro? Uh, well, short term, not really. I mean, next year I've got the Commonwealth Games. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a really, really big thing for me. But, I mean, like I say, a big pot full of money. If someone's going to come in and make me an offer that's going to change my lifestyle dramatically, then... You can't, you can't really refuse. I mean, you've got to do what's best for yourself and look out for number one in this world. If someone come with me, pop for money, I'd change my mind as well. <laughs> anyway, four of today.